Hello and welcome to this recording um, of the first recording in the Azure demo series. So today I'll be showing how to set up the lab VM that we'll be using in Azure. The material that we're following, um, I'll go ahead and search for that. So if you search in Google for 20533 GitHub and if you press enter, the first link that it comes up with will take you to the Microsoft Learning 20533 um, GitHub rep repo and these are the instructions that we'll be covering in this series but for us to be able to follow these instructions we need to set up a lab VM so in this very first demonstration I'll be showing you how to set up that lab VM I'll be setting it up um, in Azure you don't have to you can use any virtualization platform of your choice could be Hyper-V, could be Zen, could be VMware ESXi could be VMware Workstation could be VirtualBox anything you prefer it could even be a physical machine your physical laptop as long as you have a machine with all the different tools that I'll be installing today as long as you have all this set up on that machine then you're fine and good to go so that being said let's get into it so what I'll be setting up here is just a single machine in Azure I'll name it MIHCL1 and that's just following the naming convention in the material that we're following it's going to be a windows server 2016 um, machine and it's going to have visual studio pre-installed also here are the steps of what i'll be going through today so very first thing let's get our lab vm deployed to azure so to do that if i go back to the azure portal and then i click on new when I search in the marketplace, I'll search for Visual Studio and not Windows Server 2016. The reason for that is I want an image that already has Visual Studio pre-installed to save me um, that part of the task of having to install it manually. Also, you may um, see some images that have Windows 10 that, that are based on Windows 10. Um, except you're using a subscription that's MHDN based, you probably don't want to select those. Um, so I will be using Windows Server 2016 in my own case. Um, also, I want to ensure that I select the one that says Visual Studio Community 2017, not Visual Studio Enterprise 2017. And the reason for that is because for you to be able to use the Enterprise Edition, you do need a product key to activate the application after the deployment. So I'll just go ahead and select Visual Studio Community 2017 latest release on Windows Server 2016 x64. So if I click on that and I click on create. So um, by the way, before I proceed here, um, let me mention that the Azure account that you're using, uh, if you're following through with me, Ensure that you're using it as your free trial account and as your pass account and the MSDN account. In other words, just a testing as your environment. Please do not do this in a production environment. The reason for that will become clearer as we go because we will be running certain scripts that will be wiping resources from your subscriptions. And you don't want it to be a case of where there's an error in one of the scripts, it ends up wiping out resources that are vital to your business or to your organization. So please do not do this in a production Azure environment. At least get an Azure trial environment set up. For the name of the machine, I'll call it MIA CL1. Um, username, I'll enter student. And the password, I'll set a complex password. Please ensure you do set a complex password because you will be connecting to this machine from the internet. For the resource group, I'll call it Azure Lab RG. Or I can actually call it Azure Demo. I think I'll prefer Azure Demo rather. Azure Demo RG, I'll select a location close to me, which is West Europe. And then if I click OK to that. Next, I have to select a, the VM size. You can select D2 V3, that's good enough for what we're doing in this lab, but I'll just select this to ensure I have extra horsepower, but you, you don't need to select this. You can go for the smaller one. If I click next to that, yeah, I'll mainly leave 
almost everything at the default settings apart from monitoring which i'll disable because again this is a test environment i'm not doing monitoring on this machine and i'll go ahead and click ok here it's going to run a quick validation test and if it passes that's fine go ahead and click create it's going to take a while for the deployment to complete so in the meantime i'll pause this recording and when it completes i'll come back um, or i'll start to resume the recording and then we can go through the rest of the steps in preparing our lab vm that we're going to be using in this series so welcome back so the deployment completed successfully now so what i'll do um, i'm already in the resource blade for the virtual machine that i just created but in case you're not sure how to get to this page you can always click on virtual machines um, to the left hand side and you'll be able to see your new virtual machine there and then you can click on that so the next thing that we'll do before even logging into the virtual machine is let's first of all add an additional disk to this machine so this would be the disk that will host some of the materials that we'll be using for the lab to do that um under the settings blade of the virtual machine if you go ahead and click on disks and then on the disk if you click on add data disk um no manager disk was detected in my case so i need to create a new disk so i'll click on this option here to create a disk I'll give the disk a name. I'll call it MIHCL1-data01. I'll leave it in the existing resource group and I'll leave the account type as standard LRS. And then the source type, I'll leave that set to none. For the size, I'll change it from 1023 to 102. I don't need anything more than 800 gigs, really. If I go ahead and click on create, so this may take a short while also, so I'll pause the recording. And once the disk is fully created, I'll resume the recording again. So the disk um, got created successfully. So do not forget to click on save before exiting this screen. If you do not click on save, the, the disk has just been created, but the configuration has not been saved. So if I go ahead and click on save here, again, that should not take too long. Why it's doing that, I think I can go ahead and click on overview under the virtual machine section and I can find the public IP address of my virtual machine here. So if I click on that option to copy it, if I bring up remote desktop and then put in the public IP address of my machine there, what I'll do also is I'll set the username to be Azure, I'm sorry, I use student for the username, so I'll need to put in student there. Ensure that the display is set to full screen, and then I'll click on connect. So now it's asking me to put in my username and password again. I'll put in my username, which I set to be student, and the password that I configured during the deployment. And then if I click OK to that. So it's going to prompt me um, for the certificate. I'll go ahead and, and select the option to not ask again. And I'll go ahead and click on yes. So now I'm logged into my virtual machine, uh, which is what I'll be using for, this, for the lab steps that we'll be following. Next thing that we need to do is I've just added an additional disk. I need to configure that within the virtual machine. So if you follow me a bit closely here, because I'll be doing some um, extra steps. So one of the first things that I want to do is this virtual machine. So once it comes back up fully, there we go. It comes with a DVD drive, even though it's in Azure, it comes with a DVD drive um, that's using the drive letter E. Now, I want to use the drive letter E for my new disk. Why, you may ask. So the reason is, when we're doing the labs and following the lab instructions, there will be situations where it's going to refer to the drive letter E because that was what was used for the original lab VM. Um, to make it less confusing, I will use la um, drive letter E for my disk also and then use the same volume label, which is all files, um, that was used for that um, additional disk that will store the lab material. So let's go ahead and do that. To do that, first of all, I'll show you that extra 
DVD drive there that's using he. What I'll go ahead and do is if I click on the search button and type C O M P M G M T dot M S C to bring up the computer management console. And then if I click on that, what I want to do in this case is I want to disable this E drive so that I can assign that E drive letter to my additional disk and the volume that I'll be creating. So that's computer management there and under computer management if I click on device manager it's going to give me a list of all the devices that are attached to this machine and if I expand DVD CD-ROM right click on that and click on disable and go ahead and click yes to that so that's disabled if I go back to this PC I should not see that again so that's good so then I'll go ahead and set up my additional disk by clicking on disk management and it should automatically detect my new disk that I attached. You can use either MBR or GPT, it does not matter in this case. I'll select GPT and I'll click OK. So my disk has been initialized. So the next one I need to do is to create a new simple volume by right clicking there and selecting new simple volume. If I click next on the screen and use all available space and then click next. The drive letter ensure that you select E in this case. If we've not disabled the DVD drive, we won't be able to select E. I click on next here. So for the volume label, I will change it from new volume to all files, capital A and capital F. And I'll select the I'll leave the option selected to perform a quick format. If I go ahead and click next and I go ahead and click finish on this. So if I go back to the screen may take a short while but then I should have my new volume that has the E drive letter and the volume label is all files. So let's go through what I'll be doing next. So the next thing that I'll do is I'll download the required lab content and what I mean by that is the page that I showed to you earlier this github um, repo here. If I go back to the root um, there are certain um, files of certain partial modules and other um, needed files that we'll be using for the lab. So what I want to do is to download this to the machine. So if you just follow this closely. So I have my new volume here. For me to be able to browse easily on this server machine, because remember it's Windows Server 2016, I first of all need to go on the local server and disable Internet Explorer security configuration. That's obviously not a good practice in production of a production system, but this is just a test environment, so I'll go ahead and do that. And then I'll go ahead and put in the link for the 20533 GitHub repo. And then if I press enter to that. So here, I can see if I'm at the root, I have the option to clone or download, ensure that you're at the root, not within any of these other directories. So if I go ahead and click clone or download and click on download zip, it's going to prompt me here to say, do you want to save it? Do you want to open it? I'll go ahead and click on the drop down there and click save us. So the reason is I want to change the location that it's going to save it and the name that it saves it as. So I'm going to select my new E volume. And I'm going to change the name from this long name just to 20533. So the reason for that is if I don't do that, I'll run into the path name limit. So I'll go ahead and just leave that and click on save. So that's all downloaded. That's just roughly around 62, 63 meg. If I go ahead and right click the new download and then I extract it and I extract it to the same location. So this is where if you still leave it at the long path um, name, you may get an error that says um, some files have already breached the limit for the path um, length. So in that case, just ensure that you have a very short name there. Okay, and that's fully done. Now this is the folder. The next thing that I'll do is the content of this all files folder. If I double click on that, this, this content here, 
I'll copy them to the root of my E volume. So copy and then paste them to the root of my E volume. So the next thing that I'll do after this completes is if I go back to my extracted folder, if I go under that and under modules, so under all files under modules, I'll see about um, five PowerShell modules here. So these are modules that we'll be making use of in this lab. So what I'll do is I'll copy this um, entire um, content of the modules directory or modules folder. And then if I go under my C drive under Windows, under Windows, uh, under System32, sorry, under System32, and then under Windows PowerShell. And then V1.0 under modules A. And then if I right click and then paste A. So the reason is um, to make it easier for PowerShell to detect the module. So I'm putting them in this PowerShell modules um, path. So that's done now. Um, that's the next step done. So going back through the steps we're going through, we've downloaded and um, moved to the right parts the required lab content. The next thing that we'll need to do on this machine is we'll need to install Azure PowerShell and Azure CLI. And to do that, um, we'll be downloading, uh, we'll require certain links that I'll put in the description below. So let's go ahead and do Azure PowerShell first of all. If I go back to my lab VM and then go here and search for PowerShell. If I right click on PowerShell and then click on run as administrator. First of all, I'll right click on it and then pin it to the taskbar as we'll be using it a lot in this series. Also, what I did was left click on the top left side of the PowerShell window on the properties because I want to make the font a bit larger and make it easier for you to read. Okay, so to be able to or to install PowerShell, um, we're going to be installing it from the PowerShell gallery. Um, that's the easiest and preferred option. There are other options that we could use. So. But we'll be installing it from the PowerShell gallery, but we need um, a module called PowerShell GET to be able to do that. So the very first thing that I'll need to do is to confirm that PowerShell GET is installed on this machine. It is if you've used the same image that I used. Um, if it's not, you can go ahead and download and install it. But in this case, it is installed. So Again, I'll put the links to this in the description below. So get module PowerShell get. Let's verify that that is installed. So PowerShell get is indeed installed. So the next thing that I'll do is I'll put in the command to install Azure HRM which is the Azure PowerShell module. So if I go ahead and type the, or put in the command install module, Azure have them allow clobber. And then if I go ahead and press enter to that. So this is one that may take a while to complete. So I may need to pause the recording. But what we should see very soon, it's that it's going to reach out to the PowerShell. Oh, okay, actually, you know what? Let's run that again, because I will need to explicitly authorize that. So if I run that again without pressing enter twice, did they, did they detect my enter already? Because what we need to do is it says you're installing the module from an untrusted repo. Do you want to allow it? That's from the partial gallery and I need to type A to that. So if I type A and then if I press enter, it's going to reach out to the PowerShell gallery, downloads the modules and install those. So in order not to make the recording longer than it should, I'll pause this recording at this time and then I'll come back once it's finished installing. Okay, welcome back. So PowerShell, Azure PowerShell has successfully installed on this machine. The next thing that I'll do is I'll go ahead and download and install Azure CLI also. So to do that, if I bring up Internet Explorer, and then if I go to the link that I'll put in the description also. So if I bring up a new tab, 
and put this link in there. Scrolling down to install on Windows, or I can click on the right option, the iPod link to install on Windows, and I can see the MSI installer that I can download from here. So if I click on that, it's going to prompt me. I'll just go ahead and run this rather than do an installation. So I'll click on run. And then it's currently downloading the Azure CLI MSI package. And then once it's finished downloading, all I need to do is to go ahead and install it by just clicking on it and clicking next. So here we go. Accept the terms and conditions and click install. So that will take a while to finish also. So I'll pause the recording and I'll be back once it's completed. Okay, so as you see, I um, finished installing now. So if I go ahead and click finish to this. So the next thing that I'll do is I'll go ahead and restart this machine. So right click the start button and then go to restart it. So while it's starting, let's go to the next steps of what we'll do. So the next thing that we'll do once the machine comes back up is to verify that Azure PowerShell and Azure CLI I, I indeed or have indeed successfully installed on the machine. And the next thing that we'll do is we'll install Web Platform Installer to complete this recording. So I'll go ahead and pause the recording now. Once I'm logged back into the machine after it's finished restarting, I'll resume the recording again. So machine restarted now. I'm logged back into the machine via RDP. Let's go ahead and verify Azure PowerShell has been installed. So I'll bring up PowerShell. And then if I type, let's see. If I type in login Azure, I should be able to, um, if, I, if I type login Azure have, I should be able to use the tab button to complete this. So login Azure have M account. And then if I press enter to that, it should pop up to ask me to enter my username and my password. I will actually go ahead and log into this now. So I'll just click close and cancel out of that. The next one I'll do is I'll click on the search button here and type in CMD for the command prompt. I'll right click on that and click on run as administrator. I'll make this a bit larger for you to read. So I'll make that 24. And the colors, I'll make that 255, 255, 255. And click OK to that. Okay. So for this one, I'll do AZ login. And then if I press enter to that, it may take a while to respond uh, if you're doing this the first time. But what should happen is it should come up and ask us to go to a URL and put in a code to log on to my Azure account. While this is going on, I'll go ahead and bring up Internet Explorer and try to complete the last steps, which will be to install the Web Platform Installer. Now, Web Platform Installer is not one that we'll actually be using now, um, but it's a tool that we'll use as we go on um, with this whole series. So what it does is it makes it very easy for us to install other tools. So I click on free download on this page, and then if I go ahead and click on run, So what I want to do is after it finishes running, I want to pin that also to the taskbar. I'll do the same thing for the command prompt, by the way. I'll right click on it and pin it to the taskbar. And if you look around and look at Web Platform Installer, for example, you see there's a lot of tools that we could use it to install. So things like web metrics and a lot of other tools. And that's what we'll be using it for. So I'll go ahead and right click on it and pin it to the taskbar also. And then I'll go ahead and close it because we don't need it for now. Um, going back to Azure, um, to, um, to the Azure CLI, I can see now that it's prompting me to go to a page, put in a code, and then I'll be able to authenticate. So I won't be doing that now. So I'll use Control C to terminate that and type yes to agree to terminate that. So that confirms that we have Azure PowerShell, Azure CLI installed, and we also know that we have Azure Web Platform Installer installed. So that's been said. Um, in the very next module, 
let's bring up the lab instructions that we're following if I go back to this if you go under instructions under the github page and then you find these instructions in the lower part of the page so I won't be using the ones in the upper part of the page because these assume that you know your way around things so to make things more simpler for us I'll go through this um, sets of instructions which are more verbose and um, goes by the assumption that um, every step needs to be called out for this in the next um, video in this series what I'll be doing is I'll go through this lab um, which is managing Microsoft Azure lab and then you can follow along with me so I'll see you in the next recording bye for now